Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen? You know, we wake up some days, and it does not feel like this is a day the Lord has made. We feel like we've been attacked, or we have barrages of troubles around us, but this is the day, every day is the day that the Lord has made, and we will find a way to rejoice in the hard days, amen. It's not that we rejoice that they're hard, but we rejoice that the Lord of all creation, the God and Savior of our lives, is seated on His throne, and that He has willed a purpose for this day, for your day, no matter how it might look to you. He has willed it to be good and beneficial for you in some way because we know that all things all days and all things in our days work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose amen so today I want to bring a word that will encourage you through these days it's a it's a word that it's a little different because uh, it's coming from an outside versus inside sort of picture. And I've called it the water works. So let's take a look at the properties of water outside your body. Now that may seem kind of different, but let's just think about it. If you're in water too long, what does the water do? It dries out your skin. It prunes you. And that's sort of like a great dichotomy, that water that is uh, supposed to be life-giving and a life-giving source and replenishing, that we're made up of 70% water and that we need to drink water all day long, to be in water dries us out. Isn't that just, that's just an odd little fact for me. And if you're in water too long, you get all pruny, all pruny. Too much water around you and you'll drown. Simple enough. Prolonged exposure causes you to dry out. It evaporates quickly if you're outside. I know that we love to go to the water, to the beach, or to the pool. And when you get hot, you jump in a pool. And when you get out, you feel nice and cool. But how quickly that water evaporates. It feels good for the moment, but as soon as the, the sun comes or the heat comes, it evaporates off of you. Uh, if you go... Um, if you have to go really bad, you understand what I mean? If you have to go, like you're in a car and you have to go, <laughs> that the sound of water makes it even worse, right? The sound of running water will make that feeling even worse. So just being around water has no real significant value to us. So if Jesus said that he was the living water, we cannot just be in the midst of the water. Sure, we go to church. We hear others pray. We hear others sing. We come to Sunday school. We do retreats and conferences. We come to Bible studies. And that's sort of being around the water, okay? Because he's the living water. And so you're hearing it pouring out of other people. You're hearing the living water pour out of me as I speak to you. But if you're just around the water or in the water, it's not beneficial to you. Jesus wants the water to be in us. We cannot sufficiently survive with just water around us. I could never survive every day if I just lived on someone else's water supply. I couldn't survive if I just was around someone who was in the water and had the water flowing out of them as well. Because we need to be not just around the water, but we need to have the water in us. So if we need to have water in us, then let me just sort of make a little connection between us being physically thirsty. If you're physically thirsty and you're just around water, what to do for you? 
if you're just around a whole lot of water but you never drink it and you are thirsty I mean you're beginning to just feel that thirst and that dryness on your throat and your lips get dry and you begin to feel sick and dizzy and not well but all the water is around you what would you do you certainly would understand and realize that in the natural you needed to take some of that water and put it in you because that sustains your life how much more most of us are living around water but we don't take the time to put the water into us let me give you a couple scriptures this is Psalm 63 verse 1 one of my favorite Psalms of David because David is crying out to God and here's what he says oh God you are my God can we just stop there for a moment I love being able to say that to my God my God you're my God you're not just someone you're mine uh, you just camp there for a moment can you say that can you say to the God of all creation to the God of this world that you are that he is your God God you are my God David goes on to say I shall seek you earnestly my soul thirsts for you my flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water hear David's heart he doesn't say his body thirsts but his soul thirsts for God that place inside of thinking and reasoning and personality and emotions uh, it's the place where we um, love and and uh, enjoy and find peace in our soul that's the place and David says my soul I'm just crying out for you because I'm so thirsty in a land where there is no water he felt like he was in a place where he could not be satisfied in his soul I've been there I have been there so if David says I'm thirsting for something we know it's not just regular natural water what is it well I think Jesus answers that in the Beatitudes in Matthew when he says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what for righteousness for righteousness now righteousness is a big church word uh, it's a Bible word but it's a church word we kind of sling around and really it means right living or right behavior right thinking right speaking right feeling everything is right and then you ask well who determines what's right well God determines what's right it's our thinking lines up with him our wills line up with the right thinking of God and the right purposes of God the right emotions that we line up with God and so we're thirsting for that right living that ability to live a good right and just life before our God but Jesus promises a type of water that will satisfy even our deepest deepest thirsts and it's called living water now water if you turn on your tap is not living well we hope there's nothing living in it amen it's not living it gives you natural life but it's not living what Jesus promises is a special kind of water a living water that will penetrate deep within us now the word living means to be possessed with life and to have fullness of life to have vigor to be made alive and it means more than just life it means an abundantly vigorous beneficial wonderful full life and Jesus says that's what you should be thirsting for the desire to have this amazing abundant life that's what I am thirsty for I don't want to live just some mundane sort of ordinary life I want a spectacular life in God now it doesn't mean that every day is this spectacular new exciting moment for me what it means is that every day I can arise in an expectation and a hope every day I get up out of bed there's an expectation and a hope that something spectacular can happen now when I mean spectacular we're looking for those big great things of God like the parting of the Red Seas but to me spectacular means I have lived out my destiny for this day you know, I get up praying, Lord, I know you have made a path for me. 
I know you have ordained my footsteps for this day, and I pray that I don't veer from them from the, to the left or to the right, that I follow them, that I fulfill the purpose of this day, and then I lay my head down on my pillow at night, feeling that peace that I have fulfilled God's destiny and purpose for that day. That makes my day spectacular. Now, sometimes my day is going to the beach. That's a spectacular purpose for my day. Sometimes it's working at my office for 10 or 12 hours. That is a spectacular day if that's what God had ordained for me. Sometimes my day, my, my day is going out to dinner with friends or going out to lunch and ministering to somebody. Sometimes my whole day is waiting for that one person who needs a word from God. And I spend all day just anticipating that one person. Whatever his purpose and will is for your day, if you have fulfilled that, then it's spectacular. And that's what God wants you to live in, that place of expectation and hope. And he does that by feeding you this living water. Because remember what living means. It means that fullness of life, that vigor. And so it's not a physical water. It's a spiritual water. Jesus promises this. Let me read this. This is John chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, this is the woman at the well, if you knew the gift of God, now that's a gift of God, not just something that is great or something that is there. It's an absolute gift from God. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. That living water is a gift. But here's the thing. Like the woman at the well, she had to ask for it. Let me read it again. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. The water is so amazing that it has the ability to satisfy us forever for all eternity because in the in four verses down in john chapter 4 verses 4 verse 14 he says this but whoever drinks this water this is jesus whoever drinks this water that i will give him shall never ever thirst but the water that i give him will become a well of water springing up to eternal life this is a water so amazing that when you drink of it or, pour, or, or partake of it, it becomes a living well. In other words, the supply, get this, the supply does not have to come from outside anymore. It wells up inside of you personally. You don't have to seek the living water anymore. You don't have to go and try to find it or get a treasure map and go dig up where water might be. You don't have to live in anyone else his water. Jesus promises that if you let him give you his living water, it springs up in size so that you will, first of all, never thirst again because you have an ongoing supply. You know, it kind of gives me this picture. I know it's a crazy picture, but it's a picture of one of those hats that has a place for two, like, cans of Coke or Pepsi, and it has the straws that come down, and you can just keep drinking, keep drinking, then supply, supply, keep drinking, keep drinking. That's the picture I have in my head about this, that I have an endless supply of that living water inside of me welling up. Remember, water on the outside dries up. Water on the outside evaporates. Water on the outside even can make you drown. But water on the inside does the opposite. You see, water on the inside doesn't uh, dry out your skin. It replenishes your whole being. And being in this much water, you'll never drown. You just have a constant supply of this water. And he promises us that this water that he wants to give us costs us nothing. We don't have to pay for it or buy it. It costs us nothing. Listen to this. This is Revelation chapter 21, verse 6. We're near to the end of the whole history of, of the Word in the Scriptures. And God is about to just close the chapter of the Bible. And He says this in verse 21, uh, chapter 21, verse 6. Jesus said, Then He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of water of life without cost. Without 
cost. Jesus says, I will pay the price for the living water. I will pay that cost. I give it to you freely, the living water. And so you're asking, what is this living water? Well, before we get there, let me, let me show you what it does. First of all, this water cleanses. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. God promises that this special water that Jesus wants to give us, first of all, cleanses us. Then we understand we're not cleansed from the outside. I certainly don't need to be cleansed from the outside spiritually. I need that from the inside. And so he gives us the living water because we don't need to be cleaned out here. We need to be cleaned in here. And so this water cleanses me from the inside out. I needed that. Oh, if you knew me 30 years ago, you would not have believed who I was in Jesus. I was a terrible, terrible person. I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. And I was prideful and I had a horrible, filthy mouth. If you had seen me, you would have never thought that God could have cleaned this person up to become a messenger, an ambassador for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But that's exactly what he did. He cleaned me up from the inside out and he took away that desire to lie and I became just a woman of truth. He took away that desire to, to speak foul out of it. I saw that scripture that said, can bitter water and sweet water, can good water and bad water come out of the same mouth? And I thought, no, no, no. And so I cl God cleaned cleaned me up. And since then, I mean, we're talking 30 years. I have not said a bad word in 30 years. That's only God. That's only God. I used to have a hair trigger, uh, trigger anger and God delivered me out of it like that. I, I cannot remember the last time I was angry. Now I've been hurt. I've been frustrated, but to lash out in someone with anger, I have not done that probably for 25 or 30 years. Gone. You see that living water was given to me without cost by my Savior, and it cleansed me from the inside out. Not only does it cleanse, but it refreshes. Proverbs 25, 25 says this, Like cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a distant land. That good news is the gospel. And that gospel, that Bible, those scriptures to me, is like a cold water to a weary, weary soul. I love ice. I did a missions trip in Mexico when I was in my late tw or mid-20s. We, we were in a little village called Kamkatsadat. No running water, no electricity, no indoor plumbing. It had nothing. We slept in a hut in hammocks. And the one thing that I craved more than anything else was something cold to drink because we only had water that we had to boil, put a little bit of iodine drops in, a little bit of uh, chlorine, and we could drink it. Oh, I wanted ice. It was the one thing I really craved. And so uh, mm, cold water on a hot day, that's what God's water does for us. It just refreshes you from the inside. Third, it wears away hearts of stone. Now you know that when water comes down babbling brooks or down mountains or down streams that the, the torrent of water over time wears off the harsh edges of rocks. That's why there's so many rounded rocks everywhere we go where there's water because the water has taken off those harsh corners. Check this out. This is Job 14:19. Water wears away stones. Its torrents wash away the dust of the earth. And so we understand that what that water does. Now, it doesn't mean anything until you put it together with Ezekiel 36, 26. Moreover, 
I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove your heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So let me ask you, if God says he's going to create a new heart in us, how does he do it? You go back to that Job 14, 19, where it says water washes away the stones. It's torrents wash away all the dust and all the harsh corners. And God says, I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to refresh you. But I'm also going to use that living water to take all the harsh corners off of who you are. All those harsh personalities, all those harsh characteristics, all those harsh reactions that you might have, I'm going to wash them away with a torrent of water over and over until you are smooth and beautiful and there's not a jagged edge that might hurt anybody else. That's what the living water does. Amen? Amen. Fourth, water is life. That is, there's life in the water. Now we know that water was Jesus that Jesus was talking about was way different than what we're thinking. So can I tell you what that water is? Are you ready? This is John chapter 7, 38 and 39. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the spirit in whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so the living water that Jesus wants to give, you can't get it any clearer. It says, but this he spoke of the Spirit of God. The water that Jesus wants us to have is the Holy Spirit himself. It's the Spirit who cleanses. It's the spirit that refreshes. It's the spirit that melts away the hard hearts of stone. And it's the spirit that gives us life. Hallelujah. And Jesus says, you don't have to pay for this. It is of no cost to you. I have paid the price. I went to the cross, I was crucified, and I have to go that I might send this living water to you. And we have this amazing living water within us. We don't have to seek it. It comes in us when we accept him as Lord and Savior. When we ask God to give all of who he is into us, we have that living water. Now, in order for the water to be prosperous and beneficial, it has to be on the inside. But here, when water is in a place... And there's no movement of the water. What happens to it? It becomes stagnant and infected with disease and bugs and germs and bacteria. Water has to flow. And when we allow the water to flow out of us, that which was already placed in us, the Holy Spirit, when we allow that Holy Spirit water to flow out of us, it continues to bring life and it doesn't remain or can become stagnant and so we have to be careful not to just suck all that water in we want all the holy spirit all the holy spirit we can get we just want to keep taking and taking i want to go to church and take and i want people to sing to me on the worship team but i don't want to sing i just want to be sung to I don't want to read my Bible. I want somebody to read it to me in Bible study. I don't want to have to study it. I want someone to preach it to me. You see, that's taking it all in without putting it back out. And that water will become stagnant inside of you. And it will have been all for naught and beneficial for no one. Really, not even you. The only way to possess that water is to give it away. And that's why we are. it flows out of us. That living water flows out out of us. John 7:38 says this, He who believes in me as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That water brings life wherever it flows. We are the vessels of God to share that living water. If it stays stagnant in us, it will eventually die within us and cause things to die around us. We are a people of the wondrous water works of the Holy Spirit. We are thirsty to receive it. We are thirsty to give it away. Amen. Amen. We are thirsty for that water like David cried out. I'm thirsty. 
But once David got it, he poured it out through the Psalms. You see, he didn't just keep it in. These beautiful Psalms were from David because he poured back out what God had poured in. Aren't you glad that Jesus poured out what he had poured in? Amen. Amen. I pray that this word just went deep into your spirit. I pray that it spoke to you about letting that water flow through you. And speaking of water flowing through you, if you have a prayer need, oh, please call the ministry or get online and send us a prayer request because we want to flow back out to you in prayer. And if you want us to come as a worship team or as a ministry team to your church to speak this life-giving word, give us a call. We want to put you on our calendar for fall. Uh, dates are lining up, so just give us a call and let us do that for you. And remember, above all else, God is painting a beautiful picture of your life with His, one brushstroke at a time. God bless you. Introducing the new Zulon Press book, In Moments Like These, Volume 2, by Jenny Pfister. Moments Like These, Volume 2, is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today.